Hello everyone, I'm Simon. I'm excited, this story, Drowning in Love, it's one I've had for a while, I've sat on. Finally, it's time to start telling it. Really been looking forward to this one. Dropping back a few years, where I was a manager in a bar in Patea. A guy walked in one day, one morning, guy was called Joe, uh, J-O-E, uh, about 40 years old, 41, 42, American, really intelligent guy, average looking, average build, and uh, we hit it off straight away when he came to the bar. He was only in Patea for three or four days, and uh, just happened to wander into my bar, and he told me, what he did for a living and started telling me some of the tales and I was fascinated. It was, uh, it sounded a fantastic life he had. He started off um, in the military in America from a young age, actually from a young age, he was, uh, had a fixation on boats, water, um, and as he got older, he started studying oceanology, the seabeds, the beaches, the, the rip tides, currents, moon, all this sort of stuff. And he educated me over the few days. He went into the military um, and uh, into the US Marine, uh, I'll get, USMA. So, uh, U.S. Merchant, that's right, he was in Merchant Navy, U.S. Merchant Marine Academies. Eight years, something like this, studying and taking exams and put his whole life into this passion of his. He never married. He, a few girlfriends, but he wanted to be a pilot, not of a plane, but of a ship, a boat. The big ships. His dream was the, the super tankers, the monsters of the sea. Many years studying, he came out of the military, finished at Uzma, and landed a job with one of the cruise companies. He became a ship's master, onto a ship's captain. But he also, he was very good with numbers, angles, and all his studies. He then started getting certified around the world at different harbours, getting the correct certification, so he could basically pilot any vessel into these harbours. Sounds like a glorified car park attendant to me. <laughs> he was addicted to it. Any exam certification, he would go for it. And he was telling me how his, these uh, cruise liners, he, he would work for six weeks most of the time, get a four week break, and he'd spend the four weeks probably doing another certification. But he was from America, he was based on the East Coast. A lot of his work was around the Caribbean, and all the different islands and the southern parts of America's, even South America, but often went across uh, Australia and then around parts of Asia. And he told me that the reason he was in Batea this visit, his father before him was in the military and had told him, you've got to go certain places in Asia. Amongst them were Bangkok, Batea and Phuket. Um, so on this trip he'd been to Bangkok and he was in Patea and in the future he would look at um, Phuket, that was in part of his plans anyway for the future. He said that he wanted, ideally when he was 45, 50 he wanted to live in Asia but he wanted a certain job that was only for the elite pilots where he would captain, master, 
either tankers or cruise ships from Japan, um, Korea, the eastern side of Asia and pilot them down round by the Philippines, working their way down to Brunei, Indonesia, to Singapore. Singapore was a big hub, but he kept mentioning to me, and I didn't know, the Malacca Straits. So from Singapore, south tip of Malaysia, uh, in the middle of the Indonesian sort of islands, there was this one little gap, as I called it, little alleyway, that went up the side of Malaysia, with northern Indonesia island to the one side, Malaysia to the other, and you creep up towards um, from Malaysia to Thailand and just this little gap was like a shortcut for the big ships and cruise ships that then could cut across to India, Goa, Sri Lanka and onto the Suez Canal but this one area, this route was classed as the hardest for the pilots and of the ships and it was the best pay but he wanted, he didn't want to stay in the States he wanted to retire off to Asia somewhere and that job was the one he was working towards. And over our three days, he mentioned it a few times, his plans in the coming years were gonna be, all his holidays, was learning all the coastlines of on those routes um, and trying to work right the way around. That was his aim, but he was a fascinating guy. He knew so much and I learned so much in those few days. I left the bar scene then, a few weeks later, off I went, he went off, and we picked the story up, um, probably a year later, the introduction of a young lady by the name of May, uh, M-A-I, now May was a farm girl from the Isan area, northeast part regions of Thailand, um, farming family. Now they were quite, they weren't well off, but they'd done well through the generations. They'd had land handed down to them, a little bit of money, but they had a lot of land and they rented it out. And it was just the mum and dad and May, the daughter, young teenager. Um, and they decided that this daughter of theirs they wanted to give her a head start in life. They didn't really want her being a farm girl and living in the villages. They wanted to give her an education, try and help her get a better life and a different life to theirs. So they decided with some money they had that they were gonna send her to Bangkok to live with her auntie, the mum's sister, and to put her through an international school. So May, maybe 13 years old, shipped off to Bangkok and educated. Through her education, she moved up to uh, finish school in Gwanta University. She was very hard working. She'd visit her folks maybe every other weekend. And at the age of 21, 22, she finished university. At that point, she had taken to the English language. Her English was impeccable. Even her tones and the way she spoke, it was absolutely first class. She'd done really well with languages. She was really good as well with numbers, um, sort of scheduling things and very head screwed on. She landed a job uh, with the Thailand Tourism, Tourism Organization the board or whatever it's called that looked after all the tourism plans for the for the country uh, based in Bangkok and she sort of as an apprentice starting off at the bottom and working her way up and she did start getting promoted at the age of 24 she first boyfriend Thai man um, hadn't really had boyfriends she went through a two year spell with this boyfriend and it was really bad, really bad. She physically, mentally abused. It was terrible. She had a really bad time. 
luckily she kept focused at work, but it had to end. The relationship exploded and finished in a bad way. Really left a scar. It really, that was the first guy, first relationship. Very bad, not happy. And at that point she's like, I'm not interested in relationships. Back to my career. I, really bad experience. Shame, real shame. <clears throat> not deterred by it, she kept on with her work and she promoted up. At this point she felt that she'd like to get out of Bangkok and see a bit more of Thailand. Opportunities were there for her within the tourist board and she decided that she would go into the training side of things and she would be moved about around the country probably to the main tourist spots and she found herself at the age of 27 she's done a couple of places around the country found herself in Samui training there loving it doing really well really really well Joe he's wandering around all these islands and you can imagine the man I, I picture him with glasses and a notepad and a pen looking in the coastlines and the beaches and <laughs> take measure how deep is it but no <laughs> I think it was a bit more technical than that he's wandered around uh, all the Philippines and all the different parts and he was on a four-week holiday he'd landed um, in Cambodia gone south to the uh, southern part of Cambodia and he was going to work his way round the Gulf of Thailand the, the, the large water space below Bangkok um, so you sort of got Patera on the one side Hua Hin and the other side of Thailand there boats would come into the bottom of the Gulf and go straight up the middle to Bangkok and to Chonburi ports and things so he was going to do that inside section of Thailand on this holiday and uh, especially the Chonburi bit and he did he wandered around from Cambodia went up Ko Chang, Ko Samet, uh, Patea up to Chonburi all the ports and harbours there round to Bangkok come down the other side ended up Charam Hua Hin uh, worked his way down to Samui oh. Me was in Samui. Samui and carried on down to Passani and Songkla, down to the Malaysian border. Then down the east coast of Malaysia. Um, it only took him a couple of weeks to go around. He wasn't at each place long. And ended up down Singapore again. Now he'd already got certification for Singapore lined up. Then he come around the little tip, and then that that is the uh, Malacky Strait. And he spent the last two weeks of that holiday coming up the both sides. A lot of studying, working it all out. And at the end of his holiday, he found himself in Langkawi, little island, southwest tip of Thailand, just off and almost by the Malaysian border where it joins Thailand just across a bit that was his holiday four weeks he'd done everything sorted his next plan next holiday after his six week stint again back on the boats he was going to for wander up Krabi the islands not really that fussed because you wouldn't take a big boat through that he wanted Phuket, his dad. Got to go to Phuket. And that coast, he's got to study that. So that's his agenda. May, happy in Samui. Possibly going to stay there. Loves it that much. Enjoying it, really enjoying it. May's 27. Joe's 43, 44, 45, somewhere around there. Is fate going to put these two people together? Joe never been married, remember? Never had really girlfriends, 
wasn't fussed about the girl scene in Thailand, wasn't interested. His job stopped him because he's always away. He, he couldn't really have a relationship. He told his friends and family, you know, that he want, didn't want one, but deep down he did. This story is all about fate. Will it bring these two characters together? And more characters coming up in the story. There's the basis of Drowning Love. I will see you on the next installment. Bye for now.